Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today we're going to be talking about a build that's been in the works for, well, a while now. That's the Impulse Audio Rear Speaker Build, or maybe even known to some of you as the rear speakers for the KMA Towers. Now today we're going to do a crossover reveal and go over a few misconceptions about crossovers. Now when Impulse Audio and I started this build, we wanted to challenge each other. In particular, we wanted to see if someone could come up with the simplest crossover. Or say it differently, who could come up with a crossover that could use the least amount of components? Now, I also decided that I didn't want to leave it at that. I wanted to kind of come up with what I felt was the best crossover for this particular speaker. Now, we didn't talk to each other about the crossover design at all. What we really wanted to do is see what each other would come up with and how different it would be. In essence, we didn't want our conversation about the crossover to influence the other person's design. So I know you're dying to see what we came up with. Let's first take a look at what Ryan did. Now he came up with a five part crossover, which is, I mean, it's just sickening, honestly. I mean, this is probably the least amount of components you could use to make the speaker sound good. And he was smart about what he did. Now I don't wanna repeat his video, so I'm not going to. Just make sure you watch it. I put a link down in the description below. However, I do wanna point out the capacitor on the woofer. This was a great idea. He used this capacitor to take care of the cone breakup. You see, aluminum cone woofers have a tendency to have these like high peaks caused by cone breakup. So you really need to make sure that you take care of that, because if you don't, you're gonna get distortion in those areas. So he used just that one very small cap, which is really cheap, to take care of that problem. And you can see that it really worked. Now, I also love the simplicity of his design. I, I believe that this is a crossover that anyone could easily pick up and solder together especially with everything in series as drivers. You don't have to worry about soldering to the ground or any of the common ground confusion that some people get. You're just gonna solder a few components together and solder them to one lead on the speaker and you're done. It really is a great design. Having said that, let's take a look at my easy design. Now my design, you're gonna notice, is six parts. That means I lost. That's right guys, I'm sorry, I failed. I'm gonna throw in the towel on this one Is this even a clean towel? Did you give me a dirty towel? Anyway, good job, Ryan. You won this one. But let's take a look at what I did. I did a third order on the woofer once again to take care of cone breakup. I also did a second order on the tweeter to protect it and hopefully give it better power handling to eliminate any unwanted distortion. Let's be honest, when I listen to movies, I listen to them loud. I mean, reference isn't even loud enough, right? Well, now that we've gotten that out of the way, it's important to note that I didn't get that big peak that he was getting on his tweeter measurements. Now, why is this important? Well, because I'm gonna show you my final measurements of this crossover, which does not include that. Now, I took this as an in-room measurement with my Omni mic. Now, having said that, here's the measurement that I took. I was actually really pleased with it but I thought I could get a little bit better. Now, one of the problem areas you're gonna notice is right here, there's a bump in the frequency response. It looks like it's somewhere between 5,000 and 9,000 Hertz. It's really unnecessary and it's bringing down our high end. Now, I wanted to try to attack that and bring it down a little. That way we could get a more linear response on the high end. Now, however, before I show you that final crossover, I wanna to talk to you about why we even did this. You see, both Impulse Audio and I came up with viable crossovers for the exact same two drivers and the same size enclosure. So why does this matter? I don't know how many times I hear people that want to start getting into this hobby that fear that they're going to mess up or that they're going to make the crossover wrong. Well, just be honest for a second. There's no real perfect crossover. And you can see both Ryan and I assess the same problem areas. We attack them in different ways, but both crossovers are correct. And there's really no wrong crossover here. I didn't say you can't make a wrong crossover. Of course, you, you can. However, let's break the misconception that there's only one good crossover. If you gave these same two drivers to 10 different designers, you're likely going to get 10 completely different crossovers. And all of them are going to be correct. In fact, they have competitions over this all the time. So don't let that fear stop you. Just pick up a good calibrated microphone like the Omni mic, pick up DATs, and talk to some of the people that have been doing this for a while to help you get started. All right, 
Now let's get back to the final crossover. Here it is. Holy cow. Did I really use that many components? Okay, well, I'm probably a little crazy on this, right? Actually, it just looks a little more complicated than it really is. There's honestly only three more components than the easy crossover. In fact, most of it's really unchanged. The major difference is this notch filter I added. Now I added this to get rid of that problem area I was showing you earlier. Now it's gonna be hard to see an XM and that's because our tweeters were measuring differently. So let's show you the final measurement. Now this is the final measurement that I got with my tweeter response. You can see that the response is very linear now. Now it's important to note that we didn't raise that area from, we actually attenuated it, which in turn made the areas around it even out. Now, I know you're wondering about this hump from 70 to 300 hertz. First, do realize I did port mine to about 72 hertz. Now, I wasn't happy with the response I got until I really ported it. And so at this time, I really didn't want the speaker to have kind of a bigger sound. You see, a 5-inch woofer, no matter how you slice it, is a 5-inch woofer. So when you're using it far field as in a surround speaker or even a front speaker, you're not going to fill the room with bass. It just has limitations. So in order to make the speaker seem a little bit bigger, I attenuated everything down after 300 hertz. And I have to say that in my listening test, it made a big difference. But I know some of you are thinking, well, don't we just use measurements? I mean, why do you have to listen to it? Well, that's a good question. In fact, it was a question that was asked by DIY loudspeaker pad on Facebook by Javed and Jeff Bagby. And there were varying answers to that. But mostly, people felt you not only had to use the measurements, but you also had to use your ears. It is, after all, your ears are going to be listening to the speakers and not your calibrated microphone. Now, that's the school of thought that I come from. So after I listened to it, I realized that this was going to be my final crossover design. And the movie scene that really finalized it for me was from the movie Now You See Me Too. Now, it's the beginning of the movie where one of the main characters goes in this dark, kind of scary underground tunnel. He's talking to what he believes is the head of a secret organization. And as they are talking, there are voices that go all around the room. Now, these are not the main character's voices. They're like these just voices that are kind of in the background trying to circle you and make you uh, a little nervous. And I've had a lot of speakers I've listened to that have had a lot of problems recreating this scene. It seems like especially those voices are so soft that you really don't even notice they're there. Well, this is one area in which this speaker really excelled. And I gotta say, for a surround speaker, that's exactly what you want. So I was very happy with that. And like I said, that was the scene that sold me on this crossover. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like the video. If you're new to the channel and love audio and electronics, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Until next time, I'm out.